Hey everyone, what is going on? It is Brian. We are back and we have what I would like to say is a, a pretty fun video. A couple of weeks back when uh, one of the fellow viewers of the show, Tom, was in town, we were hanging out and we went out to dinner at Repeal Steakhouse here in Louisville, Kentucky. And our waiter came out and he had mentioned that while we were looking through the bourbon menu, he had talked about this bottle the proprietor, 14 year by Lucky Seven. He said, this is a King of Kentucky Junior. This is, is a product that once my King of Kentucky bottle was finished, I poured this Lucky Seven into it and served that out because to me, they're so similar in profile. And then the Breaking Bourbon review that they did of this was really favorable, four and a half out of five. And so I got to thinking, is it as good as King of Kentucky? Could it be close to as good as one of my favorite bottles? King of Kentucky, now another viewer of the show, Eric Sawyer, will always mention the drinking game. Whenever Brian mentions King of Kentucky, do a shot. I highly recommend you don't do that on today's video. I'm gonna mention King of Kentucky a lot. However, I have blinded these two samples and we're gonna see, could this be the next King of Kentucky? Let's find out. So the glass that is unmarked is going to end up being the King of Kentucky and the glass that is labeled two Will be the lucky seven i've got these down here let's taste through the sample glasses a and b you all will know what i'm tasting before i do and reveal at the end let's get started on the first sample mm. the first sample has some of this well-oiled leather good oak notes kind of a a pop of a green apple note it's got nice brown sugar nice caramel a little bit of cherry in there. Hmm. Some honey. A little bit of tobacco leaf. Man. That's good. Nice fruitiness in there, but also nice sweetness. And some nice well-aged notes there, too. A little bit of barrel char, which, you know, is kind of one of those notes that I notice in the King of Kentucky. Let's go ahead and go to the second sample. Mm. The second sample has a bit more easygoing nuance to it. It's got a cherry note, kind of like a cherry cola. It's got some raisin. It's got some espresso. It's got some dark chocolate notes layered in there. Some barrel char as well. This is kind of interesting, the two of these. It's dense chewy the the oak is a little bit more musty a little bit more funky hmm quickly go back to the first sample it's a little bit brighter it's a little bit cleaner a little bit more refined of a pour all right let's go ahead and jump into the taste of this first glass this first glass fills the palate up it's a wide pour lots of cherry kind of cherry cola moving into some strands of chocolate it has a tobacco has a little bit of espresso in there. Some of the notes I was mentioning on the nose of the second glass, it says a long, kind of spiced, but in an elegant way, oaky, touch green, like a raw wood sort of way, but oaky, not quite leathery. More so in the oak, a little bit of warm oak, a little bit of that kind of raw wood note, finishing long, tingles around the gums, nice hug down there. Mouth feels pretty wide, pretty clean, chewy, that's glass A. Let's move over to glass B. After tasting glass A, the nose of glass B brings up a lot of more like butterscotch and caramel notes right away. On the palate, you have this kind of dark cherry note, a little bit of raisin, some plum, touch of citrus, the tobacco. Dark chocolate's kind of turned to milk chocolate on the palate. A lot of oak mixed with this worn leather note. This one moves effortlessly on the palate it's kind of pillowy in texture but like heavy it's kind of like a it's kind of like a weighted blanket it's it's soft but it is pressuring there's a lot of 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 weight to the layer again pops of fruit a little bit of citrus some of those darker notes with the chocolate tobacco leather and oak damn these are both really good pours i will say that i guess in that regard kudos to the lucky seven whichever one this is but if I'm gonna break these down, gosh, going back to the nose on A after the palate of B, 
it just brings out so many similar flavors. But overall, it's a little less of the leathery oak. I think if I knew that perhaps the King of Kentucky in this blind was a 2020, it might be a little harder to discern. But knowing that it's my 2019, I'm gonna go ahead and say that A is the Lucky 7 because it has a little bit more modern of a nose. It has a little bit more cleaner uh, a profile than what I'm used to in that kind of musty, funky King of Kentucky profile. So I'm gonna say that this is the Lucky 7, should have number two under the bottom, and this one should be unmarked. So let's look and see what's on the bottom. Unmarked, King of Kentucky, number two, the Lucky 7. Man, the Lucky 7 is no slouch. This is a really sweet pour, and if I didn't know that my sample was from 2019, I could see how this could have some similarities because some of the 2020s that I had, I had commented that the barrels I tried had a little bit more modern touch to them. They were a little bit more refined in flavor instead of that easy, lazy, dusty kind of profile, which is what I talk about King of Kentucky being, that kind of modern bottling of a dusty product. And so those salty caramel notes and everything that you find in this pour, those old antique kind of potpourri-like, um, slightly floral, like um, interesting aromatic qualities that come in the oak and the, the leather and stuff in this pour. It's just, it's just so easy for me to pick out sometimes. But again, this one's no slouch. It has great sweetness, fruitiness all around with a nice clean oakiness. If you're one who liked the Lux Row double barrel, if you're one who likes maybe some 10 to 12 year old products, this would be an interesting challenge to you as like a barrel strength 14 year product has a little cleaner profile, not over oaked by any means. I'd be curious to hear what some of these other barrels are. The one that I have is 72. So that is the one that Breaking Bourbon released their review of. And while the proprietor did have a nice amount of oak to it, it was more of a candied oak than it was a musty oak in the same way that King of Kentucky is with its added barrel char. So with that being said, no, Lucky 714 is not the king killer. However, it is a very good bottle and I'm very glad to be able to keep drinking it. I'll be excited to see how this opens up and see if it continues to evolve or change in its profile over time. Thanks so much as always, everybody, for tuning in. I hope this was interesting to you. I hope it was informational to you. Let me know if you've tried either of these pours, the proprietor 14 year from Lucky 7, King of Kentucky, any years, and what your thoughts have been down below in the comments. Have you tried these two side by side by chance? I'd love to hear what you all think about them. Thanks again, as always, for tuning in. If you all want more action, jump over to Entry Proof Live. I do that with Drew P. Whiskey. We're live on his channel on Thursday nights, doing blind flights, maybe have some guests on talking about barrel picks, all sorts of things. We have a really good time over there. If you want access to the barrel picks, maybe some behind the scenes information, join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast. Until next time, everybody, we'll see you all later.